quality of life. Welcome to Minnesota Legislative Report, our region's longest running public affairs program. Lawmakers from Northeastern Minnesota are joining us today for a recap of the week's activities at the state capitol. This is your opportunity to call or email your legislative questions and have them answered live on the air. Minnesota Legislative Report starts now. Hello and welcome to Minnesota Legislative Report. I'm your host, WDSC News and Public Affairs producer, Greg Grell. Well, it's been a quiet week at the state capitol as lawmakers relaxed and recharged during their Passover Easter recess. The break marks a midpoint and lawmakers will have plenty of work to do when they return to St. Paul on Monday. Today our viewers have an opportunity to call in with questions to lawmakers who represent you. You can call the studio with your questions by dialing 218-788-2844 or our toll-free number which is 1-877-307-8762. And now let's introduce the legislators who are joining me in the WDSE studio, starting with Senator Eric Simonson, a Democrat from Duluth. Welcome back, Senator Simonson. Thank you. And Representative Mary Murphy, a Democrat from Hermantown. Hi, Welcome. Greg. And I want to thank you both for being here uh, during a week when you didn't have to be at work in St. Paul, but I know a lot of work was being done here uh, in talking with constituents. And let's start with that. Uh, Senator Simonson, I understand there was a town hall meeting at Glensheen this weekend. Uh, a lot of constituents. Right. Uh, what kind of questions are they asking you about the session? You know, we met yesterday morning at Glensheen, uh, Representative Olson, Schultz, and myself, and uh, held this town hall, which we've done, I think, about the last three sessions. And it's worked out pretty good because it gives local folks an opportunity to come in and talk about what's happening with the session, what their priorities might be, uh, you know, going into, into the final stretch here. But uh, a lot of questions about, of course, taxes, what's gonna happen with that bill. Bonding, of course, was very popular, and there was some other subject as well, too. But well attended and uh, certainly filled all uh, two or three hours. All right, so uh, people are interested in asking questions and uh, paying attention. Yeah, Duluth is always good for being engaged, no doubt. Now, Representative Murphy, I mentioned in the introduction, there's roughly about five or six weeks now left until the, the end of the session. Where do you feel the s session is at right now? Are things on track? Are you feeling like uh, things are going well and that we'll have a, a tidy wrap up to the session or is it gonna be a mad rush as it often is? I'm not sure. I think uh, things are going on track. Our bills are being heard or at least as of Thursday, I got word that two bills will be heard, the one on the aquarium exhibit uh, funding in the Legacy Committee because there's a little bit of, about a million dollars more um, that wasn't spent. And possibility still exists then that we could uh, have some a grant. And uh, the tax bills will be heard, um, the local government aid and uh, assistance for Rice Lake and will be heard this week. And so I think th that being said, they're on track, but there seems to be new topics coming up um, through the looking at the committee uh, schedules and things that we maybe didn't dream of before. And so I don't know for sure about the tidy wrap up. Um, even the things that we have on our plate doesn't ensure a tidy wrap up. But um, I think we're where we're supposed to be at this uh, halfway point in the session. And we are a little bit further ahead in that our deadlines are over, uh, committees are pretty, policy committees are over, and now the finance committees are still meeting. But we should be going to sessions almost every day now and uh, less committee work. Well, Senator Simonson, on the Senate side, would you agree it's, uh, things are lining up pretty well for the end of the session? I think you could say that. Uh, you know, what happens in the next six weeks will really kind of determine how the end looks, but you know, I think right now we're probably where, the, where, uh, where we expect it to be at midway, but the last six weeks can always you know, go either way. It, it could go relatively smoothly or it could turn into be a real challenge, we'll see. Uh, is the break, does that come at a good time? Is it, uh, you mentioned you had the town hall meeting. Is that a good chance to regroup, kind of maybe get in touch again with some of your constituents, get a feeling for if, if you're on the right track with some of the bills you're carrying? I think it is. I like it because uh, it gives you an opportunity. You're about halfway through. You're past the second deadline. Uh, you can kind of come back and kind of regroup, like you said, and, and meet with folks. And, 
you don't get a chance to do that often during the session. You know, sometimes people do come down to St. Paul and visit, but uh, finding time when you're back home is, is really hard during the session. So having this week available to do that is really helpful. Now you are watching Minnesota Legislative Report. It's your opportunity to call in with questions today for the lawmakers who represent you. I want to mention too that today we are going to keep the program to one half hour. So if you have some questions, call them in right now. Our volunteers are standing by waiting to take those calls. Representative Murphy, you mentioned the Legacy uh, Finance Committee is going to be hearing a bill that you're carrying on the Lakes Pier Center. Authority. It's a river systems exhibit. You want to talk a little bit more about that uh, exhibit? Well, it's a request that uh, they made last year and the House passed it, but it wasn't acceptable to the Senate and so we didn't quite get it. But they've revised their plan now a little bit and so um, it's going to be heard tomorrow and they're coming down and giving the new facts. But there's um, I think a 187 tributaries that go into Lake Superior from northeastern Minnesota, uh, the headwaters, and the wa I think there's four watersheds. And this is very, very important. And one of the main topics we've heard about this session from many groups of people is clean water. And we have to keep the five Great Lakes as clean as possible. And uh, this would show uh, people that come to the aquarium the importance of the river, rivers to the Great Lakes, and it's just another step forward. All right, well, we'll pay attention to see how that uh, goes uh, in Monday's hearing, and I'm sure there'll be people interested in that. Senator Simonson, uh, not long after uh, you went on break, uh, news came out that the Northern Lights Express rail line is on track and moving forward. I wasn't trying to make a pun there, but I guess <laughs> I did. You did. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about that, uh, where we're at. I, there's been funding in the past to kind of plan it. Are they at the stage now of breaking ground, or what has to happen next? Uh, what needs to happen next is we need a significant influx of some money, uh, and then we could finish this. I think what, what has happened now is that all of the environmental impact studies that needed to be done are completed, and it has been determined that no additional studies need to be done, so this project is, is there and ready to move forward. Uh, you know, Jen, for, for the practical purposes, we're waiting for federal funding, um, and when that comes, who knows. Uh, but the project itself is ready to go. Um, I think a lot of the pieces are in place, and, and what we're just missing now is funding. And you know, I don't think the state is gonna step up and fund that entirely. Uh, but if the federal government plans on this massive federal uh, infrastructure funding initiative, perhaps it might be included in that. And there's been talk that uh, because the planning is done that, and this rates fairly highly on the federal government scale, that there is a good chance that the federal government might fund it, at, at least to some extent? Yeah, I say that with my fingers crossed, that hopefully it does happen, because I think a lot of people want to see this done. Um, and, and I think we're, we're really close to getting there, and I do think that it's relatively high on the list of priorities from the feds, too. Was that some of the conversation at the uh, town hall meeting yesterday? Did you hear from folks who are supporters of this uh, project? You know, it didn't come up yesterday, but it generally does come up. Mm -hmm. uh, there's usually a group of people that are interested in seeing that happen because transportation between the metro uh, in Duluth is an important piece and an important component for economic development between here and there. Um, and, and it usually does come up, but it just didn't come up yesterday. Okay, Representative Murphy? I'd like to clarify that the uh, Northern Lights Express is not a high-speed train. Mm -hmm. It's just a fast train, fast and train. it's on fixed rail. Mm -hmm. And um, we've, been, we've been planning it for a long time, and we've had it before committees for a long time, and so it is indeed ready to go. All right. Well, Representative Murphy, uh, one thing I saw recently, there's a bill in the Senate to fix Minnesota government pensions because more money is being paid out than is being ta taken in. Uh, Senate Republicans, some Senate Republicans want to make some cuts. Governor Dayton is proposing some additional money for pensions. Uh, I know you said on the pension subcommittee, is there any kind of bill in the House right now? And where, where are we at with pensions? Maybe explain the problem a little bit for folks at home. Many adjustments have been made and this year's bill should pass and will pass. It's passed the Senate and it's uh, in line on in the House. And I didn't know about the part that you said about the Republicans making. Well, some changes at least. Some in their, changes. In their bill. I don't think it will be changed. Um, it passed uh, Government Operations Committee and, and uh, 
I think Ways and Means already or else it's in Ways and Means. And so it should be to the floor soon. And that is an increase then? Is that an appropriation then to help cover the, the there gap? There is an appropriation and, and that's, that's the problem that we've had in the last three years. They could not c come together on what the appropriation would be. There were sacrifices made by the uh, working uh, state, state local school district employees that received these uh, public pensions and they had their sacrifice part in there and the state had their sacrifice part in but that was not funded in the past and so two for two years the bills did not get uh, passed or, sign, or, or else not signed and now this year all th wrinkles have been worked out for this uh, plan that should provide s uh, um, sustainability for the, all the pension funds until 2040. Um, Senator Simonson, what's happening on the Senate side? Can you tell us? So we did pass this bill off the Senate floor, and I believe it was the exact same bill that came out of the commission. Um, it, it wasn't amended. Um, there was, I mean, there was really a lot of bipartisan support for the bill. I, I think there was maybe 10 votes against it. Uh, when we passed it off, so it's it's a clean bill, and we think it's a good bill, and it's been a long time coming, and I and I hope it uh, I hope it gets through this year. Now, uh, Senator Rosen, uh, Republican on the Senate side, mentioned one of the issues is that people are living longer, so that was one of the reasons why they're they're paying out more money than they expected. Is are there some structural things that need to be changed, or no. is that happening? The structural things have been changed, okay. and are in. If they haven't been changed previously in previous years, the three previous years, mm -hmm. then they have they're changed in this bill, and so there's no one now that spoke against this bill, okay. and it's gone through, um, like I say, the um, preliminary committees that it had to go through, and there was no opposition whatsoever. All right, we've got a call from Ronald in Carleton, and Ronald is running, wondering, uh, Senator Simonson, will the Made in Minnesota solar rebate be reinstated? Do uh, you know about that? Yeah, this is, a, <clears throat> this is a conversation that's ongoing. I don't anticipate that there's going to be any uh, reincarnation of that provision this year. Um, it's something that happened last year in last year's bill. But this year, the uh, at least on the Senate side, I can speak for because I sit on the Energy Committee, and, and that chair has uh, indicated he's not interested in any major policy shifts this year. Um, but he has been willing to entertain uh, at least some committee hearings and discussions about the issue. Um, so I think that as we come back into next session, uh, into a longer session, we can maybe have we kind of revitalize that discussion again. But I don't anticipate any changes this year. And I believe there are still some rebates available like for, from local power companies and things like that if you install solar panels at your home? Right. <clears throat> Through individual power companies there may be rebates. You know that's up to the individual right. utility and uh, projects that were in the works with Made in Minnesota continue to be funded but there's no new funding going forward. Okay. Uh, Senator Simonson, I want to ask you a little bit. Uh, Duluth is going to be starting its uh, big reconstruction project on Superior Street. It's supposed to start April 16th, and part of that project is is, is upgrading the, the old steam plant to a hot water system, and I know that funding has been an issue. Uh, just for folks at home, where are we at? Has the state appropriated all the money necessary to make that change? Uh, I know the city is going ahead with the construction project. Right. Uh, no, the state has not finished its obligation to that project. Um, the, the request, the original request was for $21 million in uh, general obligation bonds from the state uh, that we carried that bill last year. Uh, about halfway through the session it was determined that the project didn't qualify for GO bonding, so we had to find some alternative sources of funding. Uh, we were able to find about $15 million in cash to go towards that project, so the city's come back this year with a request for seven. An additional seven, uh, and that would be that would be the final state piece of this project. And this, keep in mind that this uh, utility project will span over the course of about three years. This Superior Street project. So, uh, what we funded what they're going to do this year. I think we're good, and uh, the funding that we're hoping to get in this year's bonding bill will be for subsequent years. And Representative Murphy, that brings up the subject of the bonding bill. Has there been any movement uh, in the House so far on a bonding bill? I'm hearing a little bit more talk that uh, something is coming together, but I haven't really seen much about it. So, 
Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is, there's still discussions. It's, it is something is being put together, but we haven't seen it. And new projects are being asked for almost on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And so it's growing rather than right. getting smaller and smaller, like it should be doing at this time, the requests. Um, we think that there will be between $800 million to a $1 billion bonding bill this year. There mm -hmm. could be more than that uh, if uh, people were willing, but it seems that the most common number that's suggested is about $800 million, $900 million. Okay. And uh, that usually starts on the House side, right? Or is there a companion for the Senate uh, right now? Or? Well, it has to originate in the House because yeah. it's a funding bill, but it doesn't mean the Senate's not working feverishly to put together their own version. Sure, sure. We had a caller from Renshaw who's wondering, Senator Simonson, when are we going to get the pipeline going? I believe he's probably speaking about the Enbridge uh, Line 3 pipeline replacement. I'm not sure if the legislature has too much to do with that right now. It's in the hands of the... Uh, uh, the PUC, isn't it? So. Right, I think the legislature has nothing to do with uh, slowing down that project and I, I really don't have an answer for you because we've not uh, picked that issue up in committee at all this year. Mm -hmm. But a related measure uh, in the bills moving in the House and the Senate that proposes a new felony offense to those who train protesters who damage infrastructure like pipelines. It got a little attention uh, in the newspaper article this week. Uh, in other words, if you train somebody to be a to be a protester and they damage infrastructure that could be charged with a felony. Uh, any comment on that? Uh, do you know anything about that one, Representative Murphy? Well, I read the article. <laughs> um, I think that current law covers all the cases that uh, have arisen or that we think will arise uh, with the demonstrations, and I think that the current law has been working sufficiently and so I think discussion is always good but I don't I think it's a bit late uh, mm -hmm. for introducing new concepts as you said we're over halfway through at the session Right, and oftentimes bills like these get held over and maybe get considered in an upcoming session uh, right. if they are introduced too late uh, Senator Simonson, one thing that's uh, been getting some attention here in Duluth is the downtown medical district proposal Essentia Health has to totally make over basically the downtown medical district and Essentia has plans to uh, put a lot of money into new new buildings. Talk about that a little bit. They've, they've been uh, kind of talking about it publicly now for the first time. It's, it's really an exciting opportunity for downtown Duluth. Uh, it, it is at the scale that we've not seen in terms of, of development by a private investor uh, certainly not in my lifetime, but uh, it is it is coming together. Uh, it is challenging, as is anything, when you have a lot of entities that are concerned about what it looks like. But uh, at the at the at the crux of the matter is you've got a private investor, uh, Essentia Health, that wants to invest upwards of eight hundred million dollars uh, in their campus to modernize it and upgrade it, and that is something that uh, we should take very seriously. Uh, they are seeking uh, a state investment of public dollars of about $184 million to turn around and leverage this $800 million investment. Uh, this makes good sense to me. I think it's an opportunity to really provide some new economic development opportunities in our downtown because it won't just be Essentia building out. Uh, we also know that St. Luke's has an interest in making some investments in their properties and the whole idea of the medical district concept was to spur other economic development around these, these hospital upgrades. Um, so it's moving, uh, it's got some support. Uh, it's, we've only known about it for about three weeks and clearly this is a pretty heavy lift for the legislature to, to pull this off, but I think um, if, if we wanna see Duluth succeed and go forward and, and really provide some new opportunities that it makes good sense if we can figure this out. Now besides appropriating the money, and I think you mentioned $184 million is the proposal from the state side, are there any other requirements, anything else the legislature would have to do? I would assume that there's going to be some, uh, some maybe buildings that have to be taken, uh, maybe some private buildings that, uh, for the expansion, is, or is that more of a city domain issue? Well, ultimately we don't want to uh, take away the city's ability to make their own decisions, but it, it's, it's really important to understand that 
for Essentia to do the project that they want to do, they already own all the property that they need to accomplish that. Um, so in terms of buildings coming down or people being displaced, you know, none of that is, is happening tomorrow. Um, and I think you know, we're gonna give some tools within the bill to the city of Duluth and St. Louis County to do some uh, economic development work. We're gonna try to get some sales tax exemptions for new construction. We're gonna try to put some language in around housing. Uh, and we're gonna try to find a way to make sure that uh, we give the city the, the tools that they need to promote responsible economic development around this project. In Representative Murphy, there's an Essentia Health project in Hermantown and well, the, the Wellness Center, and uh, we haven't heard much about that lately. Is that under construction now, or where, where is that project at in Hermantown? It's not under construction yet because we have demolition to do first, uh, where the old middle school was, and uh, they're going to use a small portion of the old school uh, and attach it to the uh, Wellness Center, and they expect to open by July of 2019. Okay, and that's a project that's, the funding is in place, it's just... Uh, the state funding is in place and uh, they have revised their local funding a little bit. It's a little more expensive than they anticipated at the beginning, but um, all steps have been taken to make it a go. All right, we have a call from Peggy in Duluth and she has a question for both of our lawmakers today. And I'll start with Senator Simonson. Peggy's wondering, what are you doing before the session ends to raise the age to purchase weapons or ban automatic assault weapons? Uh, is anything happening on that front, Senator Simonson? <clears throat> well, there was no hearings uh, in the Senate in the Public Safety Committee. There's been a number of bills introduced, uh, a lot of discussion around it, a lot of uh, pushing by lawmakers to try to get these bills heard. Uh, but at the end of the day, there was, there was no hearings um, before the policy deadline. So. Unless something shows up uh, either from the House, I don't know where they're at, but if, if unless something shows up from them, it doesn't appear like anything is going to change this year. Representative Murphy on the House side? Um, there was one hearing in the uh, Public Safety Committee on gun bills, and uh, there tried to be a hearing in uh, a public health on another and um, they have not made progress. They had just testimony, it was informational, and uh, there doesn't seem to be the desire of the majority to um, do anything, but 32 bills have been injured, over 32 bills have been introduced in the House of Representatives, and I assume they have um, co uh, bills in the Senate, the, that are together with the House bill. Um, the people have, are speaking out, and certainly the children spoke out, and the marches are taking, have taken place, and the rallies have taken place. Um, so it's a daily conversation at the legislature among some people, but evidently not in the member, uh, not among the members of the majority party that has the ability to schedule bills in committees or um, send them on their way in the big committees like Ways and Means or like uh, uh, Public Safety or just send it on to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then everyone could discuss them. And there certainly seems to me to be a pretty even uh, bipartisan support for some of the issues. So Senator Simonson, what is holding it back then? Uh, well, I would say the NRA is a big factor. Uh, it always has been, it always has uh, you know, resisted any particular change in any of our uh, firearm related bills uh, and laws. And I think you know, that uh, continues to hold today. And as Representative Murphy stated, uh, you know, we can suggest all the bills we want, but it really is the majority party that determines what we hear and what we don't hear. Mm -hmm. And I think until the NRA either lets go uh, a little bit on some of these things or uh, we change the majorities, it's a really hard discussion to even have. All right, well, I'm sure we'll be getting more questions about that as the session goes on. So uh, for now, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Representative Murphy, what's the latest on Real ID and the Minnesota driver's licenses? Uh, we need to have our updated driver's licenses or we won't be able to get on an airplane unless you have a, have a passport, uh, I think by the end of the year. It's law. 
<laughs> and we think it's going to happen. I, I don't know, uh, uh, Senator Simonson has been a little closer inv involved than I have on it, but we passed it. Mm -hmm. And so it should be the law. So Senator Simonson, will we all have to upgrade our licenses or will it just happen like it normally does on, uh, on your birth date af after so many years? You're going to want to upgrade your license uh, if you want to travel. Uh, there was some discussion over the interim about maybe delaying it, and that never materialized into anything. So, as was said, this is law, mm -hmm. uh, and I would Fed, just federal law, federal right? law. Yep. And then I would just suggest that if you want to travel without any problems, it might be a good idea to make that change. Or take your passport. Or if take you, your passport. If you have a passport, right. Not everybody does, but that's a good way to go. Uh, we almost are out of time. Just want to ask you both uh, what you expect this week. Any, any big issues that we haven't talked about that the legislature is going to be dealing with or just kind of keeping on course to get things done? Senator Simonson? I think our schedule looks like uh, Senate Finance Committees will be meeting uh, mostly through the week. We only have two floor sessions scheduled, no big bills. Um, so it looks like the Finance Committees are going to be wrapping up some of their work. And Representative Murphy, what about in the House side? Same thing exists. Students from UMD are coming down on Thursday um, to remind us of what their asks are and the importance of uh, funding education on uh, K-12 through higher ed. And that's a great segue for me to congratulate the national champion UMD Bulldogs right. hockey team. So, that's pretty uh, wonderful. Pretty great, pretty great. And I want to thank all, both of you for being here. Thanks to Senator Simonson, Representative Murphy, and to everyone who called in with their questions today. Minnesota Legislative Report will return next Sunday, April 15th, with another live show. Until then, I'm Greg Grell. Thanks for watching, and have a great week. Legislative report is made possible in part by Minnesota Power. We value clean air and water while delivering safe.